Today is Thursday, May 23rd, 2019, and <clears throat> we're going to take up a different parable today as we finished the parable of the Good Samaritan yesterday. This is the parable of the persistent friend found in Luke 11, 5 through 10. Let me read this scripture. This is a continuation of the beginning of this chapter and the thought in, in Luke 11 where Jesus was asked by his disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. Verse 5. He said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey. I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, <clears throat> do not trouble me. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. And I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be, it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, <coughs> it will be open. The parable of the persistent friend is a continuation of the question of the disciples when they ask Jesus, teach us to pray just like John taught his disciples. And so we have recorded in verses two through four, the, the Lord's Prayer, as we call it, or really the disciples' prayer. And we should not deduct from this parable that God is hard of hearing, <clears throat> that he is at times turning a deaf ear to our prayers. As one commentator has stated, and I quote, the Divine Father, who for our sake delays his answers to our prayers in order that we may be disciplined in devotion and he may give us what we ask with a fuller blessing in the bestowal. Tomorrow we'll conclude this short parable. We'll share everyone of what Jesus is teaching us through these words. But for now, let us ponder the words the neighbor or the friend says. Do not trouble me. The door is shut. My kids are with me in bed. Go away. <laughs> now, basically, I think every one of us has had this time when we felt our prayers haven't been answered. And we may not hear God say these words, go away. I'm at sleep because God just doesn't sleep. Many times we, we pray, and <clears throat> we're seeking God, and we're asking that God would give us blessings, and he withholds them. We ask for sickness to be removed, and life is not spared. The burdens aren't lightened. The sun doesn't become reclaimed to God. The friends are not reconciled, and the cause is not blessed, and the wrong is not stayed. The faithful aren't delivered, and the hearts of the people of God are filled with sorrow, and in dismay and the question that rises to their lips is how long O Lord before you respond to us <clears throat> it may mean that we've asked for the wrong thing or something we think is going to help us but God knows that ultimately it will harm us it may mean that we have expected the answer to come in a specific way you know like Naaman he <clears throat> he goes to the prophet and he was sure he was going to send it into some clear water in this dirty Jordan, he says. This is the way God ought to heal me. If he doesn't heal me this way, I don't want it. It may be the timing is wrong. And God will not give it to us now. For his timing is perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Matthew Henry states that we must moderate our desires when we pray. Got something caught in there. Have you ever taken stock of your prayers? <clears throat> Have you noticed how much pet petition occurs and occupies the time of your prayer? <clears throat> Do your prayers have pre-thought or are they always spontaneous? Have you made a prayer list? Are your prayers more on an emergency basis, need basis, or are they just casual? In this parable, the need 
came unexpectedly. The man has a friend show up to stay overnight. <clears throat> he wasn't prepared and he goes to his friend to ask for food for supper. And there isn't any one of us who's outside of this kind of a, a need. It comes on us. We experience it occasionally sometimes, something unexpected. And we are in a 911 mode. God help! <clears throat> One of the keys of our prayer life is its consistency. When we stay in contact with God, that is prayer without ceasing, we usually will get, we don't usually see the unexpected as an emergency. And we see it as <clears throat> the God who has control of our lives having an opportunity to minister his power in our situation so that we really trust when the bottom falls out. So I think, in, since the context of this is all about prayer, that this, this parable of the persistent friend is, is teaching us about our prayer life. God has chosen to wait for us to act, to ask, excuse me, before he moves on our behalf. God has chosen to wait for us to ask before he moves on our behalf. Father, we, we approach you today and, <clears throat> and ask you to help us. That you're not bored with our prayers, our petitions, our praises. But you're waiting for us to come and knock and believe and trust. And you said, when we come with that expectancy and we keep at it, we're going to receive. Thank you, Lord, for your instruction today. Help us not give up on the prayers that we have presented before you. May we be faithful to continue in pursuing you with our petitions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, have a great day. God bless you.